I am Pastor Jack Davidson. Welcome to our abbreviated worship service for Sunday, October 30th, 2022. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Our text for today is a text for Reformation Day. It comes to us from Romans chapter 3. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forth as a propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God in the name of Jesus, dear friends. Imagine two men coming to a frozen river. One has a very strong faith in the ice, and the other has a very weak faith in the strength of the ice. The one who has the strong faith in the ice drives his snowmobile on the frozen river, drives it to the other side safely. The one who has a weak faith in the ice gets on his hands and knees and crawls to the other side eventually getting there, but all the while fearful that the ice may break. Both men make it across the ice, not because of their faith, but because of the strength of the ice. Two weeks later, same two men seek to cross the ice. Man, the snowmobile has great faith in the strength of the ice. He takes off in a snowmobile and goes across the ice, across the river, and falls into the river because the ice breaks. The ice is too thin to support him. The other man with a weak faith crawls across the ice, fearful of the ice breaking. And when he reaches the middle of the ice, the ice does break. It gives way. And he too falls into the cold waters. Both men fall into the ice, not because of their faith, but because the ice was paper thin. Point of the story is this. The nature of faith is not that the strength of our faith matters. It's the strength of the one whom we put our place in. The Bible says the righteous live by faith not because they have a strong faith or a weak faith, but because that faith is rooted in Jesus Christ, the Son of God in human flesh. It's rock solid because of Jesus, the crucified one, the risen and ascended one, the one who sits at the right hand of the Father. The righteous live by faith in Jesus, whose blood covers their sins. The righteous live by faith because their faith is in Jesus. That's the truth of the Reformation. Over 500 years ago, a monk by the name of Martin Luther struggled with the question, how can I be at peace with God? How can I know that God loves me? How can I know that God is favorable toward me? How can I be certain my sins are forgiven? How can I know for certain that I'm a child of God? Now, Luther tried everything in order to know God's love. He even left law school, pursuing the degree, the law degree that his father wanted him to pursue. He left law school to become a monk, all in an effort to try to become right with God. As a monk, Luther said his prayers faithfully, went to worship regularly, performed his duties, he did everything that was expected of him. In fact, Luther even took a pilgrimage to Rome, doing everything that he was told to do in Rome to try to find satisfaction for his sins, forgiveness of his sins, and the peace that he sought in his heart. Through it all, Luther wondered, does God love me? Am I doing enough? Can I ever do enough? He punished his body, he punished his soul, all in an attempt to become right with God, but still found no peace. It wasn't until he began to study the scriptures that he found the peace that surpasses all human understanding. 
he began to read the book of Romans. And there in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, he read Paul's words inspired by the Holy Spirit. And it's as if a, a light bulb went off in his head. He got it. He understood what the Bible was talking about. He understood how a, a sinner becomes right with God. It's not because of the person. It's because of God's love for them in Jesus Christ. He kept going back to this passage in Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Luther discovered the fundamental truth of the Bible, that everyone sins, and everyone is declared a sinner by God. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is no one righteous, not anybody. Salvation, that right standing and right relationship with God, is, is given not on the basis of, of a person, but on the basis of who God is and his love for sinners. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Jesus will not perish but have everlasting life. That's how someone becomes a child of God, by having faith in Jesus. Jesus, who was born of the Virgin, who lived, died, rose again from the grave. Jesus, who gives life and give it abundantly to all who believe. Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. He is the only way, truth, and life, the only way to God. Luther had the weight of the world. Indeed, he had the weight of his sins lifted from him. He felt joyful and free at peace, all on account of Jesus. Luther ended up describing his life and the life of, of, of Christians with this phrase, we are all beggars. This is true. A beggar has nothing to offer to anyone. He purely relies on the generosity of others. As Luther writes, you and I are beggars. For all that we have comes to us as a gift from God. A gift from our loving Heavenly Father who's created us and still preserves us. The gift of salvation that Jesus has won for us. That we've been purchased and won by the blood of Jesus. Not with silver or gold, but by his precious, innocent suffering and death. So that we would be his own, live under him, his kingdom. And the faith that we need God provides that as well for the Holy Spirit gives us that faith in the waters of baptism through the power of the word and strengthens that faith when we go to Holy Communion this moved Luther uh, this faith in Jesus uh, moved him to post 95 theses on the church door of Wittenberg uh, 95 statements that he wanted to debate in the church so that the church would get back to the fundamental principle of proclaiming Jesus Christ and him crucified and risen from the grave. From that point on, Luther dedicated his life by telling others of God's love for them. For Luther understood what the Bible was talking about, that we're all saved by grace, a free gift of God, through faith in Jesus Christ. Not of works, not because of anything that we can do, but it's because of Jesus and that's why our boasting is of Jesus. So, dear friend, you have been saved by the grace of God, a free gift of salvation, not because of anything that you've done, not because of what you think or your potential or what you can do or would do. God loves you now and into eternity. And God in mercy, undeserved, sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to be your Savior. Jesus lived that perfect life. He died the perfect death. He rose again. He ascended into heaven. He sends his Holy Spirit into your heart in the waters of your baptism. He proclaims to you, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He comes to you in the Lord's Supper to strengthen you in your faith. So as a Christian now, you seek to live your life to the glory of God, knowing all the while that your faith has been tested, and your faith will be tested. Yet yeah, throughout, your, throughout your life, Christ has a hold on you. He's your rock-solid foundation. 
He continues to hold you through the trials and tribulations of life. You're right with God on account of Jesus. And the Christian life is a life of faith, saved by grace, placing our trust in Jesus so that all that we are and all that we have is about Jesus. We place our life, all of our being, in the hands of Jesus. Faith is putting all of your trust in Jesus to save you because you can't save yourself. Someone put it this way. Believing in Jesus means trusting in him so much that if he can't take you to heaven, that you aren't going there. <laughs> if Jesus can't take you to heaven, you and I are never going to make it to heaven because we don't deserve it and we can't earn it. We can't be perfect as our Heavenly Father demands that we are perfect. There's no plan B. There's no other way. The only way to be saved is by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And that's why we trust in Jesus. That's why the righteous live by faith. For there is no other name under heaven whereby a person can be saved except by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. Because on Christ the solid rock we all stand. All other ground is sinking sand. The righteous live by faith in Jesus, to the glory of God and in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep both your hearts and minds through faith in the one Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the blessing of the Lord our God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you now and always. Amen. Thank you for watching this abbreviated worship service coming to you from Redeemer Lutheran Church. We're located at 1400 Concordia Drive in Lancaster, Ohio. We invite you to join us for Sunday morning worship. Become a member of our church family. We hope to see you next Sunday at 1015. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you.